Okay, guys, good news. After that win, Central Coast have drawn. So thankfully, that loss to Melbourne City is not so bad. All I've got to do is just pick up points from two of our next three games, and we win the title. And also, we could potentially spoil a Melbourne derby in the cup final as well. No one wants a Melbourne derby. No one wants to watch two Aussie teams go at it in a boring derby game. They want Auckland. Everyone wants Auckland. Auckland is the center of the universe, okay? So let's go out there, get close to the title, then make a cup final, and go for the double. Party in the streets and the city's on fire. Hello everyone and welcome to episode number 19 of the New Zealand Builder Nation here on Sean Does FM with both the All Whites and with AF Auckland. And coming today we focus on the A-League team first up. Potentially a chance for us to secure the A-League title with a couple of games in hand when we take on Sydney FC over at Allianz Stadium and then in a few days off the back of that we take on the Melbourne Victory that one also away from home at Amy Park in an Australian Cup semi-final can we try and keep our double hopes alive for the second season of the saves so if you're looking forward to that as well as a recap of our World Cup qualifier we played with the All Whites against Tahiti then do remember to go down below leave a thumbs up on the video and if you haven't done so already and are enjoying the series here on the channel also consider hitting that subscribe button and turn that notification bell on as well. It is greatly appreciated. But at the end of last week, we took on both the Wellington Phoenix and the Central Coast Mariners in the A-League. If you missed the episode, I'll leave a link to it over in the top right corner. Off the back of that, we had a six-point gap on top of the A-League with six games left in our season. One game more that we had to play before we took on Tahiti in a World Cup qualifier. It was against the team who are actually on the other side of the draw in the Australian Cup semis. They take on Surfers Paradise Apollo to expect them to make their way through the final. But that team is Melbourne City, a team who struggled for most of the second season of the save. And it looked like that might continue here at Mount Smans. We got to a flyer first highlight right from kickoff. And Gianni Bazookas gets played in behind there by Callan Elliott. Takes that one away bottom right corner to give us a nice early 1-0 lead. But unfortunately, off the back of that, Things started to go pear shape here. Talbot cuts inside. Really powerful finish that one into the top right corner to beat Alex Paulson. That made it one all. And that was the scoreline going to half time. But then early double here in the second half through Indala. That one right off the back of the restart. And then about 10 minutes later, they actually made it 3 1 here. Arsland is on the ball, floats that one far post. And for some reason, Indala does shake off Cullen Elliott there. He makes it 3 1. And then right on the hour mark, there's a corner, a very messy one, this one. It goes back out to Arslan, then back out to Alpha Luplecht. He beats Paulson, and we're 4-1 down against the team who at that stage, and still are, in a relegation playoff position. Off the back of that, did go more attacking. Rather fortunate double there, picked up by Gianni Bazookas, just past the hour mark. But we drop points to Melbourne City, who are down in 13th on the A-League table, as I said in a relegation playoff position. So maybe that'll be a bit tougher if we do make our way through to the Australian Cup final than you might expect. But that's certainly not a result I was expecting off the back of yesterday's episode. Did think we could pick up some wins and maybe get a chance to try and secure the title as we take on Sydney FC in this first game of today's episode. Off the back of that though, we had a chance to get a break from AFC Auckland as we took on Tahiti in a World Cup qualifier with the All Whites. Of course, Tahiti were the team that we played in the OFC Nations Cup final at the start of the season and who gave us a real scare early going 2-0 up. They went 1-0 up there on the 15-minute mark and I was getting flashbacks, but thankfully it only stayed 1-0. And just before halftime, Sapreet Singh stamped his authority on the game, slots that one away there just prior to the 40-minute mark. And then right before halftime, he picks up a double to make sure we go into the sheds with a 2-1 lead. Pretty fortunate deflection there to take that one past Heinous and goal, but thankfully did find the back of the net. And then he picks up an assist here in the second half as Chris Wood gets his head on the end of that one. So in the end, a fairly comfortable 3-1 win. Gave a debut late in this game to young Adam White, the player that we highlighted from the Wellington Phoenix at the end of last week. So these days, a 16-year-old does have an international cap. Would have liked to bring him on a bit earlier in this game, but despite the fact we put out a pretty strong team, not quite as comprehensive as you might expect, but thankfully did pick up the win, which is what matters. And it does mean that just past the halfway mark of the World Cup qualifying campaign, we are on top of our group of six points, joint with Papua New Guinea, 
who have now played Tahiti twice and beat them both times. So as long as we beat Papua New Guinea in one of our last two games, both of those coming up in June, we will qualify top of that group and go through to the OFC World Cup qualifying final. And if we win that, we will go to the World Cup. Otherwise, it's a playoff, much like New Zealand has been used to from the past qualifying format back when Oceania did not get an automatic qualifying spot. So kind of back on track there with the All Whites, albeit probably a bit closer than you'd expect. So off the back of that, we went back to AFC Auckland duty and thankfully bounced back from that surprising defeat to Melbourne City with a good run of results here. First up as we've been away to the Brisbane Raw 4-0 win here. First half goal to Adam Mitchell. That one actually threw a nice strike through his right foot. And then the second half really kicked away here thanks to goals to Sebastian Pascali, Nathan Lobo, and Hassan Jello, so back on track there with a comfortable 4-0 win that continued in the quarterfinals of the Australian Cup, albeit this one expected against the team down the pyramid in Gold Coast United, a 6-0 win. That one very comfortable, so that's how we made our way through to the semi-finals of that competition where today we'll take on the Melbourne victory. That one should be a bit tough away from home. Of course, last time we took on the victory, they actually beat us. That was the first episode of Bag of Me coming back from my holiday, and then off the back of that, yet again in the A-League, we took on the Newcastle Jets, that team just below Melbourne City on the table, and yet again picked up a comfortable win, albeit they did score a goal to make it 2-1 about halfway through the first half here, did the Jets through Lachlan Bayless, but otherwise pretty well in control of that game, thanks to goals through Dubango, Mount Bernadze, Jack Henry Sinclair, and a late one to Gwaveen Tormain, so thankfully bounced back nicely from that pretty surprising defeat to Melbourne City, so it does mean we're still on top of the A-League, and thankfully, on the most recent match day, the Central Coast actually got held to a draw by Adelaide United, a team only just above Melbourne City on that A-League table, so it does mean our gap on top has shrunk, but only down to five points certainly could have been a lot worse if the Central Coast picked up a win against Adelaide United, so it does mean with three games left in the season, a five-point gap, it is indeed a two-horse race between us and the Mariners for the A-League title. If we can pick up a win in this upcoming game against Sydney FC, and the Central Coast drop points against Avondale, that game got underway a half hour ago and is still locked up at nil all, that would be enough for us to secure the title, otherwise it will go down to the last two games of the season, albeit our second to last one should be one that we can get the job done in when we do take on McCaffrey FC at Mount Smart Stadium. And if we don't get it done on that day, the final day of the season, we will be taking on the Melbourne victory. That could be interesting off the back of whatever happens in this Australian Cup semi-final, but hopefully might get a chance here to secure the A-League title with a couple of games in hand, or at the very least, go very close to making sure the Central Coast will have to be perfect and we'll have to pick up no points to do a right raw bottle job and first up today, we do take on a Sydney FC team who so far in the save, I'm pretty sure we've actually got a very good record against there. You can see it. We've played them three times, bet them all three times, two quite close results, backed up with a 4-1 win back in November of last year, the sole game we've played against them so far this season. So we've got a good record here against Ufuk Talais. I mean, hopefully that continues and we can get on the verge of lifting the A-League title, of course considering our goal differential is a lot stronger than the Central Coast Mariners. I think they need to go past us on points going level. Will not be enough, albeit a couple of injury concerns going to the first game of today's episode, because it's a short backup, it'll probably carry over into that second game as well. And it does involve both of our central attacking midfielder, Stefan Malk's currently out with a Paul groin. He's our captain. As I've said a few times in the save so far, you do notice usually when he isn't in the team, but unfortunately he's out for the next couple of days, so we're going to be missing him. And that's compounded by the fact that we're also missing his usual backup in Bruce Azumi. He's out with some sprained ankle ligaments for six days, two weeks, so it does mean we have to shuffle up our bench and our usual central attacking midfield options a little bit because we've got none, so it does mean for this first game of today's episode, actually switched Gwaveen Tormin to a central attacking midfielder and Louis Toomey can play there. Stefan Negro coming back from injury, going to use him as a deep line playmaker option. So Jack Henry Sinclair can continue to cover right back. So a bit of a juggle up there to make sure we've got the numbers and the best players available with those injuries. In central attacking midfield, but hopefully we can pick up a win here, at least a point to make sure 
that we do still have some wiggle room in those last couple of games to make sure that we can pick up the A-League title in the second season of this save and we'll come back shortly and hopefully get the job done against Sydney FC. And here are the team sheets for this first game with today's episode over in Sydney. There comes Sydney FC. They are going with their 4-4-2. Pretty similar looking team to how they've looked previously with the likes of Patrick Wood up front. There we are having bounced back nicely from that defeat to Melbourne City. Just that change as I mentioned. Levine Tormeen as the cam with no Stefan Malk or Bruce Azumi. And hopefully we can pick up three points and get right on the verge of becoming champions. And a very early highlight in this game in our favour wearing the black today seeing as we are away from home against the team who are wearing sky blue. The ball falls to Mitchell off the back of that corner, squares it for a Van de Bungo who pumps that one into the top left corner, I believe that was. Don't think he was offside and this would be a brilliant start in the game. We at least want to get something from as on that final day of the season, the Melbourne victory could be tricky, but thankfully make the most there of that corner that we did have the ball ballooned up Mitchell finds the bungo, who rifles at home, and we take an early 1-0 lead. And now about halfway through the first half, we have our next highlight in this game. There was a player there for Sydney Phillips there on a yellow card who was on the attack, but thankfully we do win that ball back and almost immediately make our way into the opposition half. We're now there with an interesting pass, but thankfully we do keep possession Tormine. Nice ball for there for Bazookas, but unfortunately that one comes off the woodwork. A good chance there for us to make it 2-0. Can't quite do so, albeit. We are still on the attack here. Ronaldo is on the ball. Back to Elliot. Now a tamer. Now we're back to go. We'll see if this highlight gets up to much more. It does not. And we still hold a 1-0 lead. And just in the last five minutes of this first half in Sydney FC here, do have a free kick. But good work there from Mitchell to head that one away. Albeit Phillips to get the ball back there. But good work from Debungo. And we are back in position, albeit deep inside of our own half. But not for too long. Ronaldo is on the ball. Loose touch. King there for good slide tackle on an orange injury, but thankfully the ball does fall to us. Now Dibango does quite well to win that ball before the Sydney FC player. Now Pascali with a shot, that one forces a good save there out of Gill and goal for Sydney FC. He's came up with a few decent saves off the back of that opening goal he did concede from Dibango. Now a corner, good chance there for Fernandze, and yet again Gill comes up with a really good save. That one looked destined for the top left corner, but so far in this first half, the highlights are in our favour. Hopefully, we can grab a cushion goal to make sure we pick up a win in this one. Unfortunately, can't quite link up there inside the box. That will be that highlight. You'd imagine that might do it for the first half, albeit, as I say that, now down the other end. Yet again in possession, but this time with a throw, but thankfully keeping the ball for now. Paulson clears that one. Not very well, though, and there's a chance here for Sydney FC to do something down their right-hand side. There was a potentially a chance there for a penalty to be given, but thankfully it was flagged off and we can try and do something here on the counter-attack, albeit Ronaldo that does lose the ball there briefly to the King, but thankfully did fall back there. I think that would have been to Callan Elliott. And yet again, we can keep position doing that quite well so far in this first half. Nice ball over the top there for Kvernadze, but I dare say he might have been offside. That one did look a little bit too good to be true. And unfortunately, indeed, that was the case. Our players not celebrating. I think they knew there that Kunadze was offside to be fair so far. Really good since coming in for a Hitaran to the point where he's actually being considered for a Georgian call-up, which actually wouldn't be that ideal for the long-term goal of that save. I was hoping with Kritcher from Napoli being in that same position as Georgie, he might not actually get called up to the national team, but apparently his club form for us here at AFC Auckland would warrant it. But very good first half from us there, just a little bit frustrating. Couldn't quite grab that cushion goal. Hopefully, we can do it in the second half. No changes needed as we hold a 1-0 lead. And just coming up to the hour mark here, and I think it now might be time for our first substitution in this game. Most players are on a decent rating, except for Cullen Elliott. So we'll bring on Jack Henry Sinclair in his place for this last half hour still with a 1-0 lead. And very short look back of that first substitution. It's a throw in here for us down our left-hand side. Dibungo will find Kvernadze does quite well there to keep that ball for us so far. Well on top in this game based on the highlights. We are seeing Dibungo. We'll find Georgie some good short passing here. Dibungo for the shot. It comes off the post rather fortunately and falls to Gianni Bazookas. In fact, Gildy might have got a touch on that because Dibungo does not get an assist to go alongside that goal from the first half. Bazookas keeps up some decent form for us up front in place of his son Jello. It's been good so far despite the fact that neither of those strikers are actually that good looking attribute wise. 
when one's not firing, usually the other one isn't. Thankfully, Bazookas tucks that one home. We finally get a cushion goal and make it 2-0. And just making our way into the last 20 minutes of this game, and I think it's now time for us here to make some substitutions. We'll take off the players who are just sitting on some yellow card issues. Looking at you, Taylor Tamer, Nick Sullivan can come on for him. Also, Ronald down to Red Hard. Young Matt Wilson can come on. And Georgie, to be fair, not on a great reign today. De Hotman de Villiers can come on for him. Still got one sub left to make in these last 15 minutes, and they'll be it there. Gavin Tormin down to Red Hart. Louis Toomey at the moment, our central attacking midfield backup. He can come on with our last sub. Not too long off the back of taking that 2-0 lead. And with 10 minutes to go in this one, we now have a free kick. Hopefully can make it 3-0 here and pick up a nice comfy win over Sydney FC at the very least. Make sure they don't grab one back here to make things interesting later in this game off the back of quite a few subs, which can sometimes just mean that things do get a bit disjointed. But to be fair to Hotman de Villiers, has actually been really good for us of late on that left hand side. He's on the ball here, gets cut down by Goodwood right there from Sydney FC. That is a straight red card, and that should make sure that we're going to hold on here and pick up all three points off the back of that. We'll even go attacking, albeit apparently a push in the box there from Bazookas on Wood, striker on striker, and that might mean Sydney FC with only 10 men get a chance late in this one to actually get this back to 2 1. So, off the back of that, we will go back to positive and maybe play this a bit more sensibly. Mac here will take the penalty, but Alex Paulson built him a statue. He is so good at saving penalties, and finally, it's happening in FM, not just in real life. Off the back of that, we'll start to time waste and slow things down a little bit just to make sure we don't bottle this like we threatened to off the back of giving that penalty away, but thankfully Alex Paulson with a huge save there. They have the corner here, do Sydney FC. We'll see what Burgess can do. Takes on a shot, but thankfully it goes just off target. And thanks to an Alex Paulson penalty save, we are still tuned up, making our way into five minutes of added time. To be fair, stats wise, actually pretty even apart from the fact we've had a lot more shots on target. Obviously that penalty boosted up the Sydney FC XG, but thankfully we pick up a win despite that late steer. I'm giving away that penalty when Sydney FC were down to 10 men, but thankfully Alex Paulson with a big save to make sure that he picks up the player of the match, but thankfully made the most of our dominance for most of that game, pick up a 2-0 win, and that should mean from our last two games of the season, which will be coming up in tomorrow's episode, especially if we don't make the cup final, we just need one point to make sure we'll pick up the title with our goal differential advantage over the Central Coast Mariners. In fact, we can see how they got on in their game against Evandale, which kicked off a little bit earlier than ours. When we kicked ours off, they were still locked up at nil all. But thankfully, we get the job done. They picked up a 1-0 win. They left it late for a Marco Tullio goal, but it does mean five points clear with two games left. We should just need one more point to make sure we lift the A-League title, but we'll come back shortly and get ready to take on the Melbourne victory in an Australian Cup semi-final. So a very good one for us there. First up in today's episode, keeping a good record going against Sydney FC. And as you can see there, that goal differential does mean just one more point should be enough for us to secure the A-League title. Hopefully can do it next time out against MacArthur FC, albeit Central Coast Mariners, if they don't beat South Melbourne the day before, that would already do it. But you'd expect them to win that game, South Melbourne, down bottom, and already guaranteed to be back down in the second division for next season. But next up for us, we take on the Melbourne victory in our Australian Cup semi-final. As you can tell from the league table, this one is certainly the stronger of the semi-finals. First versus fifth, albeit Melbourne City, of course, did just beat us not that long ago. And they're the team you'd probably expect us to take on in the final of this competition as they take on Surface Paradise Apollo, those guys all the way down in the third tier of the Queensland football pyramid. So they're definitely a long way down the pyramid, a team that you'd expect Melbourne City to be handling pretty comfortably. So our job here is to hopefully spoil a Melbourne derby in the Australian Cup final, albeit going to be trying to do that while managing some of our players through some yellow card issues. The reason for that is because Lucas Nunez picked one up in that most recent game where we did take on Sydney FC and it does mean he's actually suspended for two games, not just one. So because that, going to take things safe here with all these players who are on yellow cards. So it does mean quite a bit of rotation 
for this upcoming game, we've got Michael Vuden goal, Sinclair, Victor Ross, and Lobo at the back. Obviously, Victor Ross coming in for the suspended Nunez, but Lobo and Sinclair for both Elliott and for Debango on yellow cards. Also, Louis Toomey in the DLP role because Pascali's on a yellow card. Matt Wilson out right, Ronald's on a yellow. And Stefan Melt comes back from injury, which is quite good, but stronger now in that central attacking the field role. So, quite a few changes from that first game. Of today's episode, just trying to make sure that all these players down here on yellow cards don't get suspended so that we can play them if we do get into a must win situation in trying to lift the A League title. And also, hopefully, if we win this one, we can then manage them and make sure they're available for the cup final against Melbourne City. You'd expect as well come the end of the season. Certainly, a quite heavily rotated team. For this cup game, but hopefully can still get the job done against the Melbourne Victory team, who of course did beat us last time out by a scoreline of two goals to one. Hopefully we can get some revenge here at Amy Park on Arnie's men and make our way into our first cup final of the save. And here are the team sheets for the second game of today's episode. There are the Melbourne Victory. They come to this one with a bit of mixed form and sticking with their 4-2-3-1 couple of players in there who did well against us last time, including Jake Brimmer in that camera roll. There's our team as ran through before. Lots of changes with the yellow card situation. And also, only five on the bench. We can only use three substitutions today. We are in the pink to sport. That didn't quite clash as much as the black did with the dark blue Melbourne victory uniforms. Thankfully, with the Spurs tie that we can see, should be fine with our pink uniform. Do actually think this is the first time we've worn it in a game here at AFC Auckland, but on the attack early, Kvernadze makes his way inside the box. Really good chance there, but good save there from the victory goalkeeper. And shortly off the back of that, there is a throw in here in our favourite beef here. Did see a Scott Busselage sighting on the bench for the victory, but now a chance very short the back of that opening highlight. Matt Wilson will pick up yet another assist. He's doing brilliantly from our youth intake last season. So far, I think actually the best of our youth intake players here at AFC Auckland, earning a bit of game time with his performances, and nice floated ball there far post, and this time Vernadze off the back of his first shot being saved from that opening highlight, heads that one home nicely into the bottom left corner, and we take an early 1-0 lead. And we have to wait until the last 10 minutes of the first half for our next highlight in this game, a corner which is floated there far post. Izzo comes out to punch that, someone's been pushed in the back there, apparently Vernadze, and he'll get a chance there from the penalty spot, to put this one away, and this could give us a nice buffer early in this game. So far, he's been very good from the penalty spot. Why do I open my mouth? Izzo comes up with a very good save there. That one looked destined for the bottom left corner, but Fernadze, for the first time, does get denied from the spot. We now have the corner. Unfortunately, can't quite do anything from that. And a big chance goes begging there for us to make it 2-0 just before half time. And right off the back of that Melbourne victory, have the ball really for the first time that we've seen so far in this game. We try and put some good pressure on them, but they keep it there at the back. It goes back to Izzo off the back of that big penalty save that he made before off the back of the previous game where Alex Pawson made one. Now, poor touch there from Mitchell. Looked like he had a chance there to break up the play. And for the second game in a row, Nishan Villapilli will put one away past our goalkeeper this time, Michael Wood, for the cup game, seeing as this time he's actually fit for one. And unfortunately, that penalty saved down the other end could come back to haunt us, Mitchell. That's poor from him. And unfortunately, the Melbourne victory, they make it count. Big turning point in the game last couple of minutes, and as it's now, one all. And indeed, that was it for the first half. Some big moments late on there in the first half. A safe penalty from Fernandes after he scored one early through his head, and the Melbourne victory go down the other end and score a goal through Villapile, off the back of a mistake from Adam Mitchell. So one all here, which does feel a little bit harsh based on the XG match story, but really needed to make the most of that penalty and make it 2-0. Hopefully, we can kick on a bit better in this second half. Certainly not playing badly, so we'll tell the guys that. Hopefully, can kick on and find our way into a cup final. Try and keep our double hopes alive in the second half as it's locked up at one all. Albeit, it isn't taking very long here for this first highlight of the second half for the victory. So bring on Fauna Roli at half time. A big sub there for the home team. And Azani here starts to make his way forward down this left-hand side. Nice ball forward there for Brimmer. Cuts inside and bends that one onto the post. Finds its way into the back of the net. The same goal scorers from when we lost to these guys at the start 
of last week, and they make it 2-1 really early in the second half. Azani there does his man down our right-hand side in Sinclair, and then Mitchell can't quite stop Brimmer there from curving that one with some help off the post into the back of our net around Michael Wood. And a goal either side of half time makes it 2 1 to the victory. And 10 minutes into the second half, a couple of our players out there are on some poor ratings. Jack Henry Sinclair struggling down a six point free. So Stefan Negro coming back from injury can come on for him. Hopefully, he'll last out there. And also, Gianni Bazookas today actually struggling. We'll bring on Hassan Jello up front. That will do for now. Two of our free subs used as we try and turn around this 2 1 deficit. And only a few minutes on from those first couple of substitutions, there is a highlight here which does look like. It is about to start, albeit Fernadze was just down there with an injury. Negro here will take the free kick. We'll just wait for it to happen. Gets cut off briefly, but eventually we see the free kick. Negro far post. Headed down there from Mitchell for Louis Toomey. It's a great chance at point blank range, but unfortunately straight into the hands of Izzo. And right off the back of that, we are now somewhat down the other end of free kick here to the victory on halfway. If we can see now, that's probably our hopes of a first cup final here at AFC Auckland done and dusted. But good work there from Nathan Lobo to flank Fernadze. Now a tamer on the ball goes back out to our Georgian winger. Just a good bit of hold up play from him there. To be fair, it's not a pretty good rating after that penalty save. Probably thanks to that early goal, which he did score. But now Stefan Negro against his former club is on the ball. Cuts inside. He'll find Jello. Does his man there nicely and puts it away. Bottom right corner. His 11th goal of the season. Comes on for Gianni and performs immediately. And thankfully, we are right back in this one at 2 all. We're still about 25 minutes left to try and find a winner in regular time of this one. But lovely positioning there from Hassan Jello. you on the right side of his man and put that one away in the bottom right corner. And that makes it 2 all with about 25 minutes left in this one. And off the back of that, now a throw for us in sight of the final third. It'll be a Negro there. Does lose it on the ball to Azani, but poor pass forward. And Louis Toomey is now on the ball for Nadze. He's on it and gets brought down there from Contis. Just outside the box already on a yellow card. It's a red card for the second game in a row to our opposition. Off the back of that, we can now go attacking and hopefully kick on and find a winner in these last 20 minutes. And in fact, right off the back of that red card being given, now it's Kvernadze who is down to a red heart. Actually played quite well despite that penalty miss. But big sub coming up here. Gwavin Tormin will come on for him as we hopefully can make the most of this one-man advantage. Yeah. Albeit that one-man advantage has not lasted long with 10 minutes left in this game. Stefan Negro has picked up a red injury. I think we're going to have to sell him in this upcoming off-season because he's just way too injury-prone. So this does mean we have to try and juggle things up here to try and play with a right back for the last couple of minutes of this game. Really frustrating as we just used our last sub on Gravin Tormin. So Adam Mitchell can kind of play right back. We'll then put Taylor Tame in the centre back. And it does mean Louis Toomey can play as a sole defensive midfielder for the remainder of this game. Also, might not be the worst idea because of that to go back to positive just because that's probably a good idea. 10 men against 10 men going attacking might not be the best idea, but that is really not ideal off the back of getting an advantage through a red card. Stefan Negro picks up yet another injury. We now make our way into the last 10 minutes of this game. We indeed will eventually drop back to positive, but so far nothing is happening. But it does now, right on the 90 minute mark, it's a throw in and Melbourne victory. Do just keep the ball there, but great work from Tormine with an interception. And he starts to make his way forward down that left-hand side with some fresh legs. Now Lobo to Malk has a long-range effort and forces a good save there out of Izzo. It does mean we do get a chance here from set-piece. Probably not the worst idea for a team with 10 men, even if ours is through injury, not through ill-discipline. But Lobo will line this one up from that left-hand corner. Can he find the head of a big tall lad? Yes, he will. And Georgios Victoros will head that one home. Top right corner that is massive off the back of just going down to 10 men off the back of that. We will go a bit more defensive with some of these players and also pull those wingers back just to make sure we do have that stability, especially having just lost Stefan Negro through that injury. Also, we're going to pull here Stefan Malk back to a usual midfielder as well just to make sure that hopefully no more highlights in this game will get these wingers to play as inverted ones on support. And also, we will drop here Stefan Malk to a deep-line playmaker on defense. We'll play up a couple of those for the last couple of minutes 
of this game, but that is a huge goal late from Georgios Spectros. Also start to time waste, be more disciplined and slow the pace down as well, but that is a huge goal. Thankfully, that injury to Stefan Negro might not prove too costly. It would have been gutting that off the back of the opposition, getting a red cub, Victor Ross. That is a powerful header into that right-hand corner. From that Lobo corner, we make our way into six minutes of added time. We'll see if it goes a bit longer, but it looks like it hasn't gone too much longer. And we make our way through to our first cup final here at AFC Auckland in our second season of the Safe to Be Fair. We didn't take part in the Australian Cup last season. It's the first time of asking we get a chance to win the thing. Thankfully, that missed penalty or safe penalty from Kvernadze in the first half didn't prove too costly, even though off the back of that, they did turn around the victory, a 1-0 deficit into a 2-1 lead. But thankfully, Hassan Jello came off the bench and got the scoreline back to 2 all off the back of a Negro assist. And then all sorts happened. Red card to the victory, injury to us, but thankfully... Just as injury time was starting, Victor Ross gets his head on the end of a corner. It's a late winner to make sure we pick up a 3-2 win and go through to a first Australian Cup final. So a very dramatic Cup semi-final for us there at AFC Auckland, but thankfully we are going through to it instead of the Melbourne victory. And as suspected, that final will be against the team who have beaten us most recently in Melbourne City. That game's going to be our last one of the season on the 4th of June, and we do actually get the hosting rights for that one, which is a little bit surprising, the Australian Cup final being played in New Zealand, but hopefully that gives us a good chance of picking up a double here at AFC Auckland this season, albeit, of course, as you saw at the start of today's episode, Melbourne City did come over to Mount Smart and beat us 2-4 the last time that we did take them on to that one. Won't be easy, it'll be interesting to see if those guys are still in the A-League by the time we play them in that cup final, and we should hopefully be champions in search of a double, but that will do it for today's episode. Good one against Sydney FC, then a late dramatic one in the cup semi against the Melbourne Victory. If you enjoyed today's episode, then do remember to go down below, leave a thumbs up on the video, and if you haven't done so already and are enjoying the series here on the channel, also consider hitting that subscribe button and turn that notification bell on as well. We'll come back tomorrow and finish up the second season of the save with AFC Auckland. As I said earlier, in terms of the A-League, just need one point from these last two games. Hopefully, it comes in the first of those games when we take on Macarthur FC at Mount Smart. To be fair, all our games from now are at Mount Smart Stadium. First up, Macarthur FC. You'd like to think that's the game where we can secure the A-League title. If we can do that, we can then put our rotated team for those players on yellow cards and we take on the victory yet again. We can come back and then play the Australian Cup final against Melbourne City and hopefully make it a double for the second season of the save and also get stuck in to the end of season review and reveal our transfer budget. So until then, thank you very much for watching. Keep on keeping on and I'll see you then. Cheers.